Why did the golfer bring two pairs of pants? In case he got a hole, in one. Welcome to Bobville. Starting from scratch we'll be setting up a touch screen platformer for iOS or Android. Name your project and select 2D Mobile. Quickly setting up the basics, I'll add a 2D square and a capsule, to represent the ground and the player. Next I'll set up the basic attributes to the objects, like the 2D box colliders and the rigid body 2D component, to the capsule player. Don't forget to freeze the Z constraint in the rigid body section. Next we'll go ahead and add the scripts folder in our assets and add a player movement C sharp script. We can leave it empty for now. Next, I'll build our canvas that will hold all of our buttons. I'll name it, Game GUI Canvas, set the render mode to camera, and drag in the main camera. Moving along, I'll add our UI buttons. I name the first, jump button, then with the button selected, press Ctrl D, to duplicate two more buttons. Then drag them in their respective positions. I'll name them left and right button for simplicity. Sorry you had to watch me struggle through that. But net we can go ahead and drag our movement script into our capsule. We'll catch the script after we complete our setup. Inside our buttons we can change the text, for clarity, I'll name our buttons. Even though we selected 2D Mobile when building our project there are still things that aren't set up by default. Go to the Package Manager and install the input system. After it's installed, Unity will reboot and then it will be in effect. Next go to the Build Settings and switch from the default platform to Android or iOS, then Build. Once you have that set now in our script folder we can create a new input action. Once open you can create your action map, I'll call this, player. And create new actions like move, jump, shoot, and so forth. For our move action we can change the action types and the bindings. Be sure to follow this close. I have my action map already created so let's take a look. Make sure the move trigger behavior is set to press and release. Set the 1D axis to minus 1 and 1. Set it for your corresponding bindings. As you can see I have the bindings set for the A and D buttons as well as the arrow keys. You can add whatever you like. For the jump action I have the space and the K keys selected. You can leave those as button action types. Make sure autosave is on and we can keep on going. 
Back in Unity we'll select our new input map and check the Generate C Sharp script section. A new script called the same thing as our map should appear. But notice you can't drag it directly into our player object. That's ok because now we can get a look at our player movement script we created earlier. Setting up the basics, we'll add a reference to our rigid body on our player, and a few floats for jump force, move speed and direction. Next I add a reference to our input script that we auto-generated, player controls and enable it in our awake function. The next syntax is a little funky, but straightforward. In our action map, we're referencing our player map, and accessing our move action, and checking if it's being used and calling it to our direction float. In the start function we simply add a reference to our rigid body. The update method simply sets the velocity of our player to the direction of our input multiplied by our set move speed. Lastly, we're using buttons to move our player. So we can change the direction variable when our buttons are pressed. Opposite of our movement variable, we only have to adjust the y-axis on our jump method. Be sure to save and return to Unity. We're getting close now. The hard part is over. Go ahead and drag in the player movement script and set your variables if you haven't already. Notice the direction is set to zero by default. This is because by default, our player is not moving. Now that our code is typed, let's finish setting up our buttons. Starting with the jump button, we'll go down to the onClick function, drag in our player object and select the jump input function we created in the script. The left and right buttons we'll do a little differently. Starting with the left button, go ahead and remove the button component. Next add the event trigger component and select add new event type, lastly select pointer down. Same as before, we'll grab our left input function this time. But now we will add the pointer up event type also. Select the button up function for this one. Repeat the same steps for the right button and hot dog I think we've got it. Select play to test it out. Nice. Notice how when we move to the left our direction is negative 1 and when we move to the right, it's positive 1. Well that's all for now thanks for watching. And of course, stay tuned. Peace. Why do bees have sticky hair? Because they use honeycombs.